In Earth's history, pterosaurs were flying reptiles which dominated the skies during the Age of Dinosaurs. Although some did have feathers, or at least filaments so similar it seems pretentious to call them anything else, the wings of pterosaurs were made of membranes supported by a single massive finger and stretched to the leg. Unlike birds, which take off with their legs but fly with their wings, it seems pterosaurs took off from a quadrupedal stance and mostly launched with their wings. This consolidation of anatomy seems to have been more efficient than bird takeoff, and is often cited as to why the largest pterosaurs were able to get so much bigger than the largest birds. They were highly diverse and successful, with towering giants, diminutive critters, filter feeders, and specialists in fish, insects, and small game. Although they went extinct alongside the dinosaurs 66 million years ago on Earth, their legacy continued on Chimer through the planet's own great extinction, and continues to define the skies to this day, with greater diversity than ever before. Chimer is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimere. As the asteroid which concluded the Mesozoic never struck Chimere, dinosaurs remain the dominant terrestrial megafauna. The first flying organisms in Chimere was the indigenous magic, then insects harvested during the Carboniferous. Some of these became quite massive, and for much of the first dynasty, giant griffin flies were among the apex predators of the skies. Their first competition came in the form of flying heterotherms, a clade of basal tetrapods which hunt via echolocation and have potent venom. Both of these clades were put under immense pressure during the extinction event that ended the first dynasty, but rebounded during the Permian dynasty. The heterotherms dominated in this era, with some growing to the size of large eagles, and griffin flies were steadily outcompeted aside from a few small generalists. The end of the Permian Dynasty shook the ecological foundation of this longest period of stability that Chimere had ever known before or since. Heterotherms and griffin flies were again reduced to a few small species. At this point, griffin flies reacted by rapidly producing their largest species yet. Just when it seemed like it may be their turn to claim the throne, two new clades of flying predators were introduced during the Jurassic harvest, birds and pterosaurs. Dimorphodont pterosaurs of this harvest rapidly grew to dominance, and it seems the last flying heterotherms died during this time. Griffin flies are still around in the known world today, but the largest species have a wingspan of about 10 inches, making them diminutive shadows of a time when insects were kings. The first Jurassic dynasty was ruled by giant dimorphodonts, great brutes who were clumsy flyers but sported powerful jaws which could kill on the wing with a single devastating bite. A clade of giants evolved a secondary pair of wings growing from their hind feet. It is debated by Khmer and paleontologists if these were for steering, or if they acted in supplement to the primary wing flight. Given their flexibility and strength, the leading theory is that their hind wings operated similar to the four-flippered swimming of plesiosaurs, with hind wings pushing through the air already thrust back by the primaries. They may have simply been for display, or even some combination. Whatever the reason, the largest were impacted by the end of the first Mesozoic dynasty, as more efficient flyers from Europe had been harvested to replace them, the Ramphorhynchids. These were smaller, faster, and more agile predators. It seems it took them little time to best the few remaining brutish dimorphodonts, and the following adaptive radiation saw these little fishers evolve into scavengers, small and large game specialists, divers, and even a marine clade. The largest were terrestrial hunters whose size and wingspan exceeded even the great Asdarkids of Earth. And Euronaphids, small insect specialist pterosaurs, also thrived in this era and quickly dominated the entirety of the planet. As so often happens, it seems the Ramphorhynchids became victims of their own success. Eventually, the largest species dominated, their young and enantiornithian birds outcompeted most of the smaller pterosaurs, 
and when the context of Chimere dramatically changed around 70 million years ago, the giant Ramphorinkids went extinct, and with no small generalists to inherit their throne, the title of Great Flyers was passed to the Isdarkids, giant stork-like pterosaurs who came through the harvest following this event, and monopolized on the large pterosaur niche before the few remaining small species could get large. Nyctosaurs claimed the seas after this extinction, and Euronathids persisted as insect specialists, and Topajarids, small cousins of the Asjarkids who were seed and fruit specialists during the reign of the Ramphorinkids, continued their humble lives in the trees. Some in Kaishel even abandoned flight altogether, becoming ape-like climbers. The Tyrant Dynasty saw great success for the Ishdarkids, and in the seas, Nyctosaurs dominated. These two clades became quite diverse, and some Nyctosaurs even left the seas to come inland, with one group becoming raptorial hunters that killed birds mid-flight, as the Ramphorinkids had done before them. Some of the Ishdarkids became especially proficient on the ground. They could still fly, but galloping at over 30 miles per hour was their preferred method of getting around. And Euronathids flourished in this time, taking the insect specialist niche at night, while Enantiornithian birds dominated this niche during the day. The Tyrant Dynasty ended in flames, and from the ashes, the meek inherited the earth. Unlike the total annihilation of the Ramphorinkids before them, the Ishdarkids were survived by a clade of small general hunters, and Nyctosaurs held on with a few small taxa. As no giant pterosaurs were harvested during the group's extinction on Earth, the playing field was made level and a wide range of contenders vied for the throne. Anuronathids, Nyctosaurs, Tapajarids, and Asdarkids all produced giants at this time. In addition, the flying Therosophalians of the Permian Islands got massive, taking over the skies of their home before the pterosaurs could establish a hold. The Enantiornithians also produced their mightiest form, a raptorial giant with 20-foot wingspan, and a few Miocene birds also came through with the known world at great sizes. A few million years after the dynastic extinction, the skies were at the height of their diversity, with numerous giants all vying for supremacy. By tenacity, luck, or their own adaptability, it was the Tapajarids who emerged from this conflict victorious. Some of the other groups had survived, but the Tapajarids now had a wide margin, the most common and dominant flying clade. And Euronathids survived in their smaller forms, but competition with the newly arrived bats pressed them, these ever-resilient survivors, into specialization. As the known world became flooded with seabirds, the Enantiornithians and Nyctosaurs found themselves outcompeted on the small side, and marine tapajars were cleaning out the few remaining larger species. There are reports of possible Nyctosaurs north of the known world, and indeed the Kentarim tell of a marine species of pterosaur which sometimes rests on their shores, but as no specimens have been analyzed, they might be another clade of derived tapajards. Nyctosaurs are generally regarded as extinct. Only one genus of Ejdarkids survived in the known world, and even their descendants faced Tapajarid competition, although they generally have a lock on their niches within the known world despite a general restriction to the tropics. Next week, we will learn about a diverse selection of living pterosaurs. Ejdarkids remain the iconic if specialized mesopredators, while the Aneuronathids generally dominate open forest habitats in place of bats, with their superior vision and intelligence affording them greater success in anticipating and catching insects in obscured territory. The following week we will learn about the Tapajarids, a group of pterosaurs which dominate the skies of modern Chimere. Thank you to Gage Weber for sponsoring this episode. It has been a real treat finally getting to focus on these fascinating and important members of Chimere's cast. Cheers to my Patreon patrons for your support. Helping me out even at the lowest tier is instrumental in helping me focus on Chimere as a full-time project. Also, thank you for watching this all the way through. Ad revenue has become an increasingly important source of revenue and support, and watching these videos helps a lot more than you might think, and it means so much to me that you do so. 
Thanks again, and I'll see you next week for an overview of the Anuranathids, Ishdarkids, and a surprise extra pterosaur. Cheers, folks! <laughs>